Hi guys. I was out in the yard and I happened to notice that um, even though I covered my cabbage up, those cabbage worms evidently were under the net before I netted them and they were devouring my plant. So what I did is I went around the garden and I gathered up all my cabbage leaves, all except in the buckets back over here where the tree collards are. I gathered up all my co uh, cabbage leaves, the ones back there in the garden, there's two, three, one in the bucket back there, and then one in that big half barrel. And I broke them up in little pieces, I put them in this pot, I'm going to add water, and I am just basically going to cook my cabbage. I'm going to add some uh, chicken bouillon to it. And you might wonder, well, while wow, you're going to cooking that whole pot full of cabbage, well, I'm going to go ahead and cook it, and I can store it in the refrigerator, or I can even freeze part of it after it's cooked, and then take it out and eat it when I want it. I'm also going to put in part of an onion. I'm just going to cut it up here. And I, you know, don't have to be little tiny pieces. Normally I do this in a skillet and I brown my onions a little bit first and then I put it in. But you can do it in a pot too. That was just a half an onion. I think that'll be plenty. I'm going to bring it to a boil and then I'm going to cover it with a lid. And I'm going to slow cook it for a little bit. I could have put it in my crock pot, but I don't really want to keep a crock pot going all night long in this heat. It just heats the house up too much. Yeah, I harvested all my leaves. I basically stripped that stalk. <laughs> Some of the leaves were not edible, so I just left them in the bottom of the pot. Whatever worms are in there can, can, can continue to eat those few and then the, the worms will die off. I don't know if the cabbage will come back out or not. I know the broccoli, uh, the Brussels sprouts always did. I don't know if the, the cabbage will. But I said I'm going to salvage what cabbage I can from the plants before the, the worms just totally devour it. And I did spray it, but we had several rains which washed that off. So the worms, I don't know, they just took over especially the one in the half barrel out here. So I may end up planting something else there. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens with it. But I saved some of the biggest leaves. I think I got five really big leaves that I can make cabbage rolls with. And I can always get more cabbage leaves off of the uh, cabbages out here in my buckets that's under the trees that I kept covered up. And I need to go check them tomorrow to make sure there's no worms that's got in there to them. 
Because sometimes the worms will come from the dirt, not the, just the air where they land on them and lay eggs. I don't know what it is with me today. I've been tired. Every time I sit down, I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I guess it's the weather, I don't know, but I didn't sleep good last night. It was about three o three o'clock or so in the morning before I fell asleep. So I just haven't been up to par all day. I've been kind of wore out and lazy feeling. Why is it a watch pot never boils? <laughs> it just seems to never happen. A watch pot will never boil. But this is an option. This is the way I use my cabbages, my collards, uh, all of my leafy greens, my Brussels sprouts. I don't let it head up because I know the one, once it starts to head up, the ant, those worms are going to hit it and devour it. You've got to get the leaves off before then. And the Brussels sprout leaves taste just as good as the little heads of Brussels sprouts. So, anyway, that's what I do and that's what I've told people to do when I first planted my garden was to harvest your leaves. Don't let, it, don't let your cabbage, your collards, or any of that head up because once it starts to head up, those worms will hit it. I had already done a, a video on cabbage rolls and I'm going to do another one coming up on cabbage rolls but I'm not going to put sausage in it this time. I think I'm going to put ground beef in them instead and make some cabbage rolls that way. since it's going to take probably an hour or two to cook this. We'll check back with it a little bit later on. Because I'm not going to make people watch a video of me just watching a pot cook. <laughs> I'll get it to boil and then I'm going to cover it. See how it's already cooking down? And if you put chicken bouillon in there, be careful, don't put too much because it is salty. And if you put too much in there, you'll end up with your uh, cabbage way too salty. I did that one time. I had forgotten, you know, that the, the uh, bouillon was salty. And I put it in there and it ended up, I mean, I was able to eat my greens, but it, they were just a little bit too salty. But you can see how much that's wilted down already. I guess you can see it in this pot. It was all the way up to the top. And you can see it's down a little bit less than halfway.
So if you're growing cabbage, like I've been doing, I suggest unless you want to use really strong chemicals on the cabbage to keep the worms away, to harvest your leaves, just cook your leaves before the worms get to them. Because those cabbage leaves, the Brussels sprout leaves, your collard leaves, any of those taste just as good as it will after you let it head up. Now that's starting to boil, so I'm going to put a lid on it. I'm going to turn down my heat just a tiny bit. And I'm going to come back with you in just a little bit. Well, I'm back. It's been cooking for about an hour or more. I think it's as done as it's going to get. And these are the old outer leaves. I mean, they're the ones that are usually thrown away, basically. But I salvaged them off of my cabbage plants. I've got them cooked. And what I'm doing is putting them in this big bowl. These are normally the leaves that I would use for my cabbage, my stuffed cabbage. But I broke them up, put them in here, and I cooked them. They're tender. And I've got this little chopper. I've had this for so many years, it's, it, I don't even know how long. <laughs> but I'm just basically going to, well, you can't really see what I'm doing. I'm sorry about that. I was showing the pot, but I wasn't showing the bowl. But I scooped all of the cabbage, the cooked cabbage out. Everything that was in there except the, the liquid. And I'm basically going to chop it up with this chopper. And this is the way I do my uh, collars. I bet you never seen cabbage done this way. See if I can move this and get it at a better angle.
And now as an added bonus, we had this uh, diced ham that was left from when I fixed my potato soup the other day. If I can get this bag open. And I'm simply going to put it right in my cabbage. Because it's already cooked. There is our cooked cabbage, our cooked cabbage leaves with diced ham. And that's pretty good eating right there. Y'all have some. Take the first bite. That's pretty good, y'all. And I'm going to get a smaller container to put it in. But that's some cabbage with ham, and it's it's darker than <coughs> the normal cabbage because it was the outer leaves. But it just shows you you can cook the outer leaves of a cabbage. It doesn't have to head up. <coughs> It does not have to head up. Look at that. And you can't really see because it's not down here at the light very well. This might be a little bit better. But there is your cooked cabbage with a little bit of diced ham. And even though the cabbage, the leaves were darker, they're cooked good and tender. You saw how I chopped them up. So that is a green that you can eat like that, just like you would a uh, collard or any other green. It's pretty good. So I'm covering it. And I'm storing it. And we'll go on to my next item that I'm going to fix. 